Would you be the jerk if you backed out of paying for IVF for a friend because they cracked a joke? We'll find out, but first, a story from Dog on No. Am I the jerk for telling my husband to get rid of our son's dog? I've been terrified of dogs since I was young. My husband knew, but I don't think he realized how bad it was until recently. He got our son a dog and at first I was angry, but he promised it wouldn't come near me. And our son was really happy, so I agreed they could keep it as long as it was kept away from me. For two months it was fine and I barely thought about the dog being so close, but a few days ago the dog came inside and it freaked me out. I told my husband he had to get rid of it since he broke his promise and I didn't trust him to keep it away from me anymore. My husband doesn't want to get rid of it because our son is very attached to it already and the dog is harmless according to him. He wants me to let him take me around the dog so that I'll stop being scared of it but I've refused and told him it had to go. We argued and he told me that if I wanted it gone, I would have to take it myself. My in-laws came to visit yesterday and my mother-in-law asked me if something had happened between us because I'm still angry at him and she noticed. I told her about the dog and she told him off and said she taught him better than to traumatize his pregnant wife. Now my husband's upset at me because he thinks I only told his parents to force him to do what I wanted and that we'd hurt our son if we got rid of the dog now. Bottom line, I think if OP was that scared of dogs, they shouldn't have allowed this dog to stay there one night. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy some hard-hitting, real, am I the jerk here stories, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is from Reddit AITA Throwaway 3. Am I the jerk for refusing to pay for a bottle of wine I thought was complimentary? I, 35-year-old male, and my girlfriend, 34-year-old female, went to a high-end Italian restaurant for our six-year anniversary. We ordered one pizza and two pastas to share along with appetizers and dessert. The pizza was $25 and the pasta was $30 each. We get the food and eat it and halfway through eating our food, the waiter comes with a bottle of wine and says it's free because we were the 100th customer that night. We enjoy our food and dessert when the waiter comes with the bill. Our subtotal should have been $105 but instead it's 155 because the waiter added the bottle of wine to our bill. We correct the waiter on this, but he says they made a mistake and we were actually the 98th customer, and once they realized their mistake, they gave a bottle of wine to the actual 100th customer, so we're supposed to pay for the wine. Now this might be where I'm the jerk. I flat out refused to pay for it, saying it was the restaurant's mistake, and my wife backed me up on it too. So the waiter called the manager, and he says that if we didn't pay for it, then he'll call the cops. So I just paid for it, but I left a zero tip with the writing that since the waiter cost me $50, he will not get a tip, which would have been $21. I also proceeded to leave a one-star review online, saying that the restaurant did not take accountability for their actions. When we leave and are about to get in our car, the waiter comes running out asking why we didn't tip. I say because he cost us an extra 50 bucks, so he doesn't deserve it. He flips us off and goes back to the restaurant. My wife and I go back and have a nice movie night, but that experience ruined our dinner. Am I the jerk? Some people might say that this seems like a too good to be true type situation, but I say if the waiter comes up to you and says congratulations we're offering you a complimentary so and so, you should expect that it's an actual complimentary so and so from the restaurant. Why would you have any reason to doubt otherwise? Honestly, this seems like a scam. And if it wasn't just such a huge waste of people's time, I'd love to see somebody hold out long enough for them to try to call the cops. I'd be willing to bet that they would drop the charge before they actually ever go and call the cops. Our next story is from Just Impression 1843. Am I the jerk for going to a restaurant she likes, but I don't order food? We were deciding what to eat and she really wanted to go to this restaurant. I was on board with it, but I'm super picky and had no idea what this restaurant had. We get there, I look at the menu, and nothing looks even semi-good. For example, all of the sandwiches had wheat bread only and I hate wheat. Anyway, I let her order her food and when the lady asks what I want, I told her I wasn't eating. I told my girlfriend I wanted her to enjoy the meal and I was happy to be there. My girlfriend got so mad, got up and left. I left with her and asked what the big deal was. She insists that I needed to be there eating with her. Going somewhere else together, but it irritated me. Am I in the wrong here? If you're a super picky eater and somebody says, oh, I really want to go to this place, and you agree, you probably should have looked at the menu ahead of time. 
it's kind of unfair, I think, to whoever you went with to just kind of drop the ball and poo-poo all over their experience like that. You don't go to the airport and then decide where you're taking your vacation. Why would you go to the restaurant and only then try to figure out if there's something you're accepting of on the menu? This next story is from an anonymous poster. Am I the jerk for yelling at my husband for making my daughter feel bad? So my oldest daughter, who I'll call May, is 16. She has a job, has had it for about 5 months. Out of all the children, she's the most mature. She's also good at saving, but she rarely spends money on things she enjoys, and instead keeps it in her bank account. My husband wanted her to start paying her phone bill immediately, it would have been $50 monthly, but I said no, and eventually compromised to the beginning of October. Note, my husband, her stepfather, is very money tight, and he tells her to pay for everything she wants. Now, I agree with this somewhat, as she should be monetarily responsible so she's ready for college, but he wants her to pay for everything. Anytime she asks for something, maybe for school or otherwise, he'll respond with, you have money, buy it yourself. Now, fast forward to today, May's been out of town on a trip with her class, and she was going to be gone for a week. Because this is a national event that happens every year and they're in the city, everything is expensive. She has a credit card under her name that's connected to my account, and I said she could use it for her meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but snacks and souvenirs she would have to buy on her own. She called earlier, and we were talking while my husband was in the room. She started complaining about how expensive everything was, and she jokingly said she was going to go bankrupt once she returned from her trip. I told her not to worry about it, and if she needed, she could use her credit card for whatever. Then, my husband pipes in and says, Stop guilting your mother to give you money. Whatever you want, you can buy yourself. She was quiet for a moment before saying that she wasn't asking for anything, and then he repeated, Don't guilt your mother. How can you be morally okay with that? She said she wasn't calling to ask for money, and that she just wanted to complain and that she was going to hang up. I took her off speaker to tell her it was fine, but she just swore up and down that she wasn't trying to guilt me and that she was just going to pretend the call never happened and that it was fine, and then she hung up. I was so pissed. I yelled at him, told him he was being ridiculous and that she was still a child. I left before he could respond. I'm still angry. She apologizes to me every time she buys a meal because she thinks it's too much. I've noticed that she buys her own breakfast and only spends money on lunch and dinner, even though I've said she can do all three. I'm angry and I don't know what to do. Am I the jerk? I say God forbid you want to help out your 16-year-old daughter when your husband says that they want them to pay for everything right now. I don't think OP's the jerk. I think the husband, her stepfather, is being just way too tough on her. She's 16 years old. Our next story is from Need Help Superb Cookie. Am I the jerk for telling my fiancé she can either have me at our wedding or her best friend and their dogs and we'd get married at a courthouse? Jessica, 30-year-old female, and I, 29-year-old male, are getting married next year. We've been doing the wedding planning, got places and things picked out. It's been going good until we hit this snag. Abby is Jessica's best friend and maid of honor. Both love dogs. They both have dogs. When we started talking about the wedding, Jessica told me all about this plan they both had that when each of them got married, they'd have a doggy wedding ceremony between their dogs and their future husband's dogs at the same time. I don't have a dog, not a dog guy, so there's no potential for that to happen. I like her dog enough and let her do what she will with him, and I do get him treats and toys sometimes. I thought that would be the last I heard of that. She and Abby started to talk about how cute it would be to include both of their dogs in our wedding party. Not my thing, but I have friends and family that have done something similar and I want her to enjoy the day. So I said okay, thinking they'd just be up at the altar or something like that. Nope. They want their dogs to get married during our wedding. I wasn't too keen on the idea and raised concerns like, what would they do with both dogs for the rest of the day? What if the venue we picked doesn't allow pets? We went back and forth and I agreed that they could do their dog ceremony at the end of our ceremony. A couple of weeks later, Jessica and Abby bring it up again. They want parts of the reception to be dedicated to their dog's friendship. Crap like puppy picture slideshow, a cake for them, dog friendly favor bags. 
because they want their friends and family to bring their dogs too. I told them no and that I'd already made one compromise on the issue and I don't want a bunch of dogs around for our entire wedding and reception and that if they did that, we'd have to find an all new venue probably. I reminded her that she was near the limit of what she could contribute towards our wedding funds and I'd be paying the rest. And I don't want to pay extra for stuff for a bunch of dogs. They both said that this was really important to them, so I told Jessica point blank, we can stick to what we originally agreed to, or she and Abby could have their costly party that allows dogs by themselves, and we'd just get married at the courthouse by ourselves. Abby told Jessica I was being manipulative and making ultimatums and wanted her to go stay at her place until OP pulls his head out of his butt. Jessica didn't go, but we're still going back and forth. She still wants things her way and feels I'm being too selfish. I don't think I am because I want an enjoyable wedding and marriage with Jessica, not Jessica and Abby and their pets. Am I the jerk? I can't really blame OP on this one because it's just really out there compared to the norm. I think it really kind of changes the focus of the wedding as a whole. Like, you might as well just go have your wedding in the dog park. There's nothing wrong if both of them are super into that, but at this point it sounds like Abby and Jessica are planning their dog party wedding that also just happens to include OP's wedding as the headlining act. Our next story is from throwaway bday927. Am I the jerk for calling my dad a creepy pervert for making comments about how my running clothes are too revealing? I, 19 year old female, picked up running as a new hobby and was going for a run outside today. It's hot where I live, Southern California. My dad saw my running clothes, a running sports bra and Nike shorts, and made rude comments about it like how it's so revealing that you can see my cleavage and inner thighs in it. He insisted I change out of it. I called him a creepy pervert for making these comments about my body when I'm literally just in standard exercise clothes. And by the way, men go on runs shirtless all the time. He got really upset and now isn't talking to me or making eye contact with me. I asked him what the deal is and he said I was extremely offensive and unfair to him and that he never thought I'd call him something like that. So now I feel bad but I don't feel like I was wrong to say what I was feeling at the time. Am I the jerk? Do I owe him an apology? I think OP's not the jerk here unless you're running around in your birthday suit or you're running around in something that might make it possible to pretty much be running around in your birthday suit, I think you're fine, and I agree with OP that, as disgusting as it is, their dad was sexualizing them. Started talking about all of OP's parts like they're ordering some fried chicken or something. This next story is from SWD in the wild. Am I the jerk for reporting my son's good teacher for taking his confiscated phone home with her where it got damaged? Last week, Friday, my son, 10, got his phone confiscated at school. He was mucking around with it during class and the school rules are clear about phone usage during class without permission. So I totally understood. The normal protocol is that the phone would go to the office where it would be returned to the student at the end of the day or the next day. His teacher, however, apparently forgot to stop by the office before going home after school, so she accidentally took it home with her, and through some negligence, the phone broke in the hands of her toddler. Admittedly, she was very upfront about it, and even came to our house personally to tell us what happened and apologize, which I respect. She suggested the repayment plan for the phone, and offered an old phone of hers for him in the meantime, but it was essentially a brick with a screen. After she left, I sent an email to the school about everything simply because I think it's something the school should also be involved in, since she's a teacher and easily took home a confiscated device, albeit by mistake. I received a response Monday morning apologizing for what happened and promising to address the issue. So my sister-in-law works at the high school but smokes with the teachers at the junior school, which is where she bumped into the teacher who was pissed and said that we were being jerks reporting it since she already promised to pay for the phone, offered an alternative, and is a good teacher, so we're messing with her career unnecessarily. So yeah, am I the jerk? Although the teacher did what they could to try to rectify it and be pretty upfront about it and stop it before it escalated, at the end of the day, they screwed up big time, took something home that they shouldn't have, and broke it. I think you have every right to report to the school what happened. Just like the kid got their phone taken away for not following the rules, the teacher who took the phone home and was lackadaisical enough to let the toddler get a hold of it and break it 
should also get in trouble for not following the rules. Our next story is from South Marine 3167. Am I the jerk for canceling a check of $12,000 that I wrote for my infertile friend for her next IVF cycle over a joke? I, female 35, am infertile. My ex-husband and I tried everything to have kids, but it just never happened. He divorced me, went and married someone younger who was able to give him a kid, and from what I gather, they're expecting a second child together. It hurts like heck seeing someone else have what I couldn't. I get frustrated with myself sometimes and with family blaming me for basically everything. I turn to my friends for support, especially Alessia. She's in the same infertility boat as me, but she and her husband are currently trying IVF, hoping it would work. Alessia asked me for help to pay for her upcoming IVF cycle. I agreed to write her a check of $12,000. I really wanted to help her and the money came with no strings attached. I wrote the check and gave it to her last week. She was very appreciative of it. The very next day, I got a sudden message from a mutual friend, Carol, with a screenshot of the conversation she had with Alessia. Turns out she and Alessia were talking about the next IVF cycle, and Alessia said she hoped the cycle would work because she didn't want to end up divorced and having her husband go marry someone younger and have a baby with them and another one on the way. While she's alone and without a family at 35, she's 32. I was stunned and hurt. I knew she meant me here, but I didn't confront her. I simply contacted my bank and canceled the check. In the evening, Alessia called to ask why I canceled the check, and I told her. She went bad poop, saying she didn't mean it that way and that she thought this was somewhat an inside joke between desperate, infertile women. She came over with her husband the next day begging I write another check, but I refused. An argument ensued and her husband thought I wasn't being supportive of her like when she supported me throughout my struggles. She left crying and we haven't talked since then. Her husband keeps reminding me while repeatedly calling Carol a toxic snake of the date of the next cycle saying they can't have it after I took the money that was supposed to pay for it back. Some friends think I'm being oversensitive. Carol's on my side telling me to go tell them to go to heck but I feel so bad about it. What I've done might just damage our 15 years of friendship. Maybe I shouldn't have cancelled it, but I just felt so offended by what she said about me and how she basically mocked my unfortunate circumstances. I think OP's not the jerk, and personally I think what's most hurtful here is OP said this is their friend of 15 years. I have my own friends of 15 plus years, and if I found that they went around talking about me like that behind my back, I'd feel devastated because like, is this how they felt about me the whole time? Like, were they ever a true friend all those years? Were you giving them friendship, support, love that they didn't necessarily deserve? It would be a bit of a mind freak for me. Our next story is from Sunshine970. Am I the jerk for going off on my Spanish teacher after she yelled at me for opening the classroom door? I, 17, non-binary, have Spanish in the morning from 7.15 to 8.45 EST. Every morning since the beginning of the school year, my teacher insists that the policy of her classroom is for her to open the door and her only. No student shall open the door unless they're leaving the classroom. I sit right next to the door. Students often arrive to school late, and because they're late, they must wait for her to open the door. No issue, right? However, she leaves students outside for 10 to 15 minutes at a time. No matter how many times the student knocks, she will not open the door. People end up missing the lecture and missing the instructions for an assignment. She then gets angry at the students for not understanding the lesson or assignment. Today we were going over a study guide for an upcoming test, and there was a knock on the door. I told her that someone was at the door. She said they must wait. I start a timer on my laptop and wait. About six minutes later, the student knocks again. She said they must wait. When the timer hits 15 minutes in, she said the same thing. When the timer hit 20 minutes, I open the door. Immediately, she starts to yell at me, telling me to not open the door because it's policy and there was a faculty meeting about it. Other teachers allow their students to open the door. I think this was a lie. She told me I disrespected her and her rules, even though she constantly disrespects myself and my peers. I finally snapped at her. I told her she was a sad, miserable woman who must have constant control over us teens because she has no control over herself and her life. 
She asked me for my mom's phone number, and I think she's going to try and call her because I opened the door and snapped at her. I don't really blame OP, but I do think the things they said were probably a little out of line. Personally, I appreciate OP for going out of their way to try to open the door and look out for their classmates though. I mean, just that alone makes it very hard to say OP is the jerk. This next story is from Gloomy Lavishness 4845 Am I the jerk for asking my wife if we can spend every other holiday at home instead of my in-laws after she said we can't go to my mom's anymore? My wife decided a few years ago that we'll no longer be spending any holidays with my mom because she's rude. To be fair, she is, doesn't cater to the kids enough, and the final straw was when my mom reached in front of us to get some food, and we noticed a ring and realized she had gotten married. My wife said if we weren't good enough to get a wedding invite, we clearly aren't good enough to spend holidays with. It hurt, but I agreed because I didn't want to harm my marriage. The past couple holiday seasons have been rough on me. I just don't enjoy holidays with my in-laws at all. They have like 30 people there, everyone's so loud, food is dry and bland, just no one I connect with, and it makes me miss spending holidays with my mom. Recently my wife brought up the holidays and I let her know how I was feeling. She said she sympathized but was not wasting another Christmas with my witch mom. I asked if we could just start staying home every other year and just doing something, the four of us. My wife blew up. She said I was selfish and trying to ruin her holidays just because my mom is a witch. That I don't care about our kids because they love it. They do, but they're four and two, and I think they would love anything if we made it exciting for them. And she said I need to act like a grown man and put my feelings aside for the good of the family. I feel they had the right to just ask, and she owed me at at least an adult conversation. Our next story is from True Sprinkle 6518 Am I the jerk for calling my neighbor and her daughter entitled spoiled brats? I, 16, have a certain necklace that's very special to me. It's not expensive or anything, it's just a pendant with a snake design on a leather string. When I was younger, one of my uncles and I read The Neverending Story together, and he gave me the necklace, the one that the main character in the story wears, since I loved the book so much. My uncle passed away on my birthday that year, not long after giving me the necklace. These days, the necklace is my safety item. It helps me feel secure. It's sort of a tribute to my uncle, and I wear it every day. Two days ago, my neighbor and her kids, 7-year-old male, 9-year-old female, and 10-year-old male, came over to our house for a while. My 9-year-old neighbor found the necklace while I was showing the kids my room and really liked it and asked if she could hold it. I told her she could, but then she held it for the rest of the visit and refused to give it back. I told her when they were about to leave that I needed it back, but she said that my necklace is really cool and she wanted it. I told her she could buy her own, but she didn't want to wait. When I told her more firmly, she started screaming and crying. Her mom and my mom came in asking what's wrong, and I told them that I told her she couldn't keep my necklace. My neighbor was mad at me and told me, it's just a necklace and that I'm older so I need to share. My mom tried cutting in to tell her that the necklace is mine, but my neighbor wouldn't listen and called me a bully. After a minute, I just snapped. I asked her why she was encouraging her entitled, spoiled brat of a daughter. Then I added, maybe it's because you're spoiled and entitled too. Everyone was shocked after I said that, because normally I'm the type to stay quiet. My mom acted annoyed at me until the neighbors left. After they were gone though, she said she couldn't blame me. I ended up getting my necklace back, so everything turned out fine. But I'm starting to feel a little bad over this. Am I the jerk? In no way should OP feel bad. Do not let that bother you. You let that bother you and feel like you did something wrong? That's the moment you're doing as much damage as that entitled parent. Do not normalize or feel bad for any spoiled kid behavior. Our next story is from AITA Pro 8104736. Am I the jerk for having an escape plan? If I'm the jerk, I guess I'm an unrepentant one, but this has generated a crap storm in my family, so I don't know if I'm in the wrong. I, 17 year old female, have a weird family situation. My parents split up when I was four after my older brother died. He had always been really ill. They both remarried and have stepkids and other kids. I've been bounced around a lot and I don't really feel at home in either place to be honest. My mom and her side are mad at me because I won't call my stepfather dad, and I keep to myself because there's just too many kids in that house. 
My dad's side are mad at me because they're super religious and I won't play ball with the churchy stuff. I just don't fit in in either place and I try to stay busy out of the houses with school and work. I thought about running away a couple of years ago because reasons but also I'm either gay or bi, I'm not sure yet. And either way, it's not going to be good when I come out. I got everything together but my friend talked me out of it. I decided to stick it out till graduation. But it gave me the idea of having emergency kits for if something goes wrong and I have to leave quickly. Also, I have a plan and stuff prepared so I can just pick up and leave the day after graduation. I keep all my personal stuff hidden, like I have a phone the parents know about, but I got another one and repaired a junk laptop that I use for my real personal stuff. It's a lot to keep up with sometimes, but it's a habit now and it means I get some privacy. The problem is that my stepbrother was snooping in my room while I was gone and found one of my emergency kits and told my dad who got worried that I'm up to no good and gave me the third degree and got my mom involved too. I told them I'm just trying to be prepared if there's an emergency. But they went through all my stuff and found a few things I'd written about wanting to leave and it's become a big family issue with other relatives supporting or attacking my parents and my parents fighting again. They fortunately haven't found the really important stuff but they know there's more that I'm keeping hidden. My parents and some family think I'm ungrateful and mean for being so secretive and having a plan to leave everyone. Other family thinks my parents are getting what they sowed and don't blame me. I'm of the opinion that OP's not the jerk and they need to focus on what's in their best interest and who's looking out for them in the right ways. Honestly, I think OP being here on this subreddit asking if they're a jerk based off of their family reactions is already a sign of them being too concerned with the wrong things. If there's family that does support them, that's great, but I would say don't even begin to be bogged down by anybody that thinks otherwise. And our final story of the day is from Serious Animal 4392 Am I the jerk for using a scary movie to keep kids out of my room? My, female 16, mom and dad got divorced when I was 11. My parents have 50-50 custody of me, but I mostly live with my mom and spend a lot of my weekends and summers at my dad's house. I have my own room at my dad's house and I'm allowed to lock it when I'm not there because the woman he lives with, 27, has two young kids and they went into my room and wrecked some of my stuff when she first moved in. My dad replaced everything, told her that my room is off limits without my permission, and got me a lock with a key that only him and I have. My dad, 47, seems happy to spend time with this woman and her kids, but he still makes time for me and makes me a priority. When he got a new TV, I got the old one and he mounted it in my room. One thing though, this woman likes to have other mommies and kids over for playdates. That's fine, maybe her and my dad will get married and she has every right to have guests over. The problem is that sometimes she expects me to watch all the kids, while her and her friends sit outside and drink wine or something. She even tried leaving them with me and going out for brunch with her friends. Not okay. My dad's told her to knock it off. He told me it might be nice if I chose to help, but that I wasn't obligated to help. So yesterday and today are days off from school, so I was over at my dad's for a long weekend. My mom was having a Halloween party and I didn't want to be around. So I'm in my room when I hear a knock. There she is with four kids. She wants me to entertain them while she talks to her friends. I say no thank you. She insisted. So I said I was watching a movie. And it's called Ready or Not and it's kind of gory. Not super gross or anything but not meant for little ones. But it starts out with a pretty wedding. So I open the door and let them in. And they're bored because it isn't a cartoon or a Marvel movie. But they go running when the killing starts. She comes back inside and yells at me for scaring the kids. She says she's going to take my TV away. I laughed and closed the door. She's mad and told my dad I was a disrespectful brat and that my TV should go in the kids' playroom. He said no, but he talked to me and said I could have handled it better. He isn't mad, but he's disappointed. Now, I definitely don't think OP should go giving their dad any attitude here, but I would love for it to have been said, Well, I could have handled it a little bit better, and she could have handled those four kids a little bit better too, and not try to leave them in OP's possession. Am I the jerk for uninviting my future sister-in-law from my wedding after she told my fiancé I was pregnant? 
I decided to keep my pregnancy to myself because I don't know what I'm going to do about it and I knew my fiancé wasn't going to be happy with the news. My future sister-in-law slash best friend is the only other person who knew as I only took the test at her suggestion and at her house. She also agreed that her brother was unlikely to be happy about it, but she felt like I should tell him immediately anyway. We kept arguing over it because I told her I needed time to process it, and she felt like I was making excuses to avoid telling him. In the end, she told him herself while we were having dinner with her family. He was so upset he confronted me in front of everybody. So now they all know and everybody's upset with me for keeping it from him. Her sister kept trying to reach out and apologize after it happened, but I was ignoring her as her only excuse was that he was her brother, so she couldn't keep it from him and that she gave me three weeks to tell him myself. The last time she called me, I was so upset that I answered and yelled at her. In the heat of the moment, I uninvited her from the wedding and told her I would find a new bridesmaid. I've given my fiancé and his family another reason to be upset with me, but I've refused to let her come to the wedding even as a regular guest despite them asking me to and it being important to them for her to attend. Am I the jerk? I definitely think both sides are jerks. She definitely shouldn't have said it in front of the whole family, but I think the father deserves to know regardless of what decision you ultimately make. Also hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy getting to the bottom of whether or not these people are jerks over some tough situations, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for leaving my friend's dog at a dog shelter after she abandoned him at my home? I'm 35, female. I have a friend, 32 female, who asked me to dog sit her poodle for two weeks while she was on vacation with her husband. I had some rough patches with this friend before, but she paid me before to take care of her dog and my house is big, so I agreed. I really like dogs, I had many throughout the years, and now I have one good golden boy named Dorado. But I really hated their dog, peed everywhere, was destructive, picked fights with Dorado, felt entitled to my food while having a full bowl untouched, even pooed on my bed. Out of all the places they could go, they decided to poo on my bed. After two weeks, I called my friend, expecting her to be back in town and to come get her little monster back. She never answered. No text, no social media, nothing. After trying to reach her on Instagram, I got blocked. I waited and waited for her to appear in front of my door, but that never happened. I called her husband, also ghosted me. After 10 days of being ghosted, I had enough, went to a shelter, and dropped the dog there. They won't accept pet dogs into the shelter, so I had to say it was a stray dog. I finally had peace at home, and one week later my friend called me, saying that she was coming back for her dog. I blow up at her, asking her where the heck she was and that I got tired of waiting, so I dropped the dog at a shelter. She started fighting with me over the phone, saying that it was unfair, that I was putting her dog in danger, and that I could have just waited a little longer. I sent her the shelter address and some days later she said that she was going to sue me because she had to buy her dog back. This shelter doesn't sell dogs, maybe she was charged an adoption fee. She's making my life so much more dramatic right now. Maybe I should have waited a few more days? Was I wrong for what I did? While I feel bad for the dog, I mean the fact of the matter is they went MIA on you and dumped this dog and literally avoided talking to you. I don't see what else OP could have done besides doing something that would end up leaving OP paying out of their pocket for somebody else's dog. Honestly, maybe the dog was better in the care of the shelter than they were at the friend's place anyways. OP waited 10 days longer than they even agreed to and were completely cut off. Definitely not the jerk and I feel bad for this dog. It probably acts out because their owners are terrible. Our next story is, am I the jerk for putting mistakes in my shared Google Doc notes? I, 21 year old male, am currently taking organic chemistry 1. Needless to say, the class is incredibly tough. Luckily though, I've been studying since day 1, so I'm doing alright in the class. I'm taking the class with a group of friends, so to help them out I shared the personal notes that I take in class with them via a google doc, and I encourage them to invite anyone they know. Recently one of my friends invited a friend of theirs, let's call her Jess, 20 year old female, who I've never really interacted with, but I have a massive crush on. I think she and I would make a great couple, but she's not really into sensitive smart guys, because on her Instagram, 
I see all her stories show her out with really jock-like men. Our third exam is in a couple of days, and as I was going through the Google Doc, I realized that she was using my doc the most. You can see who looks at or edits the doc on Google Docs, and most of my other friends would pop up sometimes, but I would see her icon pop up a lot. I also know for a fact that she isn't doing well in the class, so I got a really good idea. I would put subtle mistakes in the doc so that she wouldn't do well in the exam, and then I can offer to tutor her. That way I can interact with her and talk to her so that she'll realize that I have a great personality and hopefully we can go out together. I told my friend about this plan and they called me an incel jerk. Personally I think they're overreacting because Jess isn't going to do well either way even if I don't put mistakes. So my plan will actually benefit her grades while also allowing me to interact with her and talk to her. I think it's a win-win for everyone but I was wondering if my friend may have been onto something. So, am I the jerk? So, I think OP is the jerk, and I think this is some creepo, dark room, glasses completely lit up by the computer screen, rubbing your hands together type thinking. You want to ensure that she fails so that you can swoop in and look like a hero and rescue her in the hopes that you can convince them to hook up with you after you demonstrate your massive value? Either just try to talk to her or let it go. If you have to initiate some elaborate scheme just to have a chance, it's probably for the best you let it go. It makes me think of the dentist system from It's Always Sunny. This next story is, am I the jerk for eating whatever I want in the house? I, male 51, live with my wife, 49, and three kids. A girl, 24, and two boys, 21 and 14. I paid the mortgage, I pay the bills, I pay for groceries. My wife works and her money goes for our vacations and retirement. We're happy with this arrangement. She makes about $85,000 a year. I make more. My daughter has a job that she got after college. My middle kid works part-time while he's in school to pay for extras. All three of my kids will graduate their undergrad with no debt. I work weird hours and shifts. I'm writing this at 3.30 in the morning because I just got home. There was a note waiting for me on the fridge berating me for eating a box of firecracker shrimp I found in the freezer and made myself for supper yesterday. Apparently, it was something my daughter had bought for herself. There wasn't any note on it in the freezer or anything. This isn't the first time this has happened, but I think it'll be the last time. I'm thinking of talking to my wife and asking her to tell my daughter that anything in the freezer or fridge that isn't labeled is fair game or that she has to start paying for all of my groceries that she consumed. Because she doesn't buy the basics, she eats all the groceries that my wife buys. I don't really have a problem with her living here rent free and eating my food while she saves money. I do have a problem with her calling me a jerk for eating food I found in my freezer in my house. I should probably add that in the past I found out that more than once, Food she got actually just meant food that she added to the grocery list that I paid for and her mom shopped for. Am I the jerk? I feel like both sides are kind of needlessly going for the neck right away. Like, I don't know if there's just a lot of tension in this house, but I feel like at least OP is very on the edge about this. OP clarified that it was something that the daughter specified for themselves, but the wife actually paid for using their and OP's shared budget. I say OP's not the jerk, if it's not labeled, you might as well just expect it is fair game. Our next story is, am I the jerk for cooking mushroom pasta when my boyfriend doesn't like it? Me and my boyfriend, we're both 30, moved in together a few months ago. We split chores, including cooking. My boyfriend doesn't like mushrooms. He's not allergic or anything, and he'll eat it if he has to, but he always avoids any dishes with mushrooms at parties, restaurants, etc. I'm the opposite. And one of my favorite dishes is chicken and mushroom pasta, which I often make for dinner. I obviously don't make it every time, but when I do, my boyfriend usually eats a small amount or makes himself something else. He said he doesn't like it, so I try to make it less often. Well, last night I made chicken and mushroom pasta. My boyfriend saw and he got kind of mad, saying he told me he hates mushrooms and I should make something else. I replied that I like it, but he said I should have put some away before adding the mushrooms or just left plain pasta for him. I said if he has such an issue, he can always make something else. I'm gonna say OP is the jerk just because they know that they do not like mushrooms. 
So if it's their turn to make dinner and they decide they're going to make something that they clearly don't like, it's not like the boyfriend's even demanding for you to make them a whole different dish. They're just saying, leave some elements aside before the mushrooms go in and they'd be happy enough with that. That seems like a fair thing to concede. This next story is, am I the jerk for calling my son a selfish freak? This morning, my wife is having a major surgery due to a breast cancer diagnosis. We're about 15 minutes from the hospital. Check-in was scheduled for 5.30 a.m. Unbeknownst to me, my wife let my 23-year-old son borrow her car last night. My car is out of the state because I moved for work. So while I'm here, we only have one car. We decided to leave at 5 a.m. because she's obviously anxious and doesn't want any added anxiety caused by running late. As 5 a.m. hits, my wife tells me my son isn't home yet from the night before and he has the car. I am immediately infuriated. I swallowed my anger as not to upset my wife, but I was livid. She tells me that he's 15 minutes out. I said to her, I guarantee you he brings back the car with no gas. He rolls up at 5.20 and I just give him a death stare and get in the car. Sure enough, gas light is on. He said he didn't have time to put gas in the car. I stop and get gas, put about 15 bucks in just to save time, and we get to the check-in a little late. It ended up not being a big deal. My son Venmoed me 25 bucks for gas. I proceeded to text him and tell him, it isn't about the gas money. It's about you being a selfish freak and not being considerate of your mother's situation by being late. This is who he is, and I have had it. He's oblivious to the world around him and the people in it. It makes me sick. He has the audacity to tell me name calling won't solve anything and to get my wife to the hospital safely and stop texting him. I'm furious. I've had it with his entitled behavior. Am I the jerk for calling him a selfish freak? Absolutely not. I think OP's not the jerk. I don't really know what else you can do besides obviously not helping out your very adult son wherever you can at this point. It's hard to not be emotional, but I would say at this point be honest and be stern. They showed a complete lack of consideration for their mother in a very serious situation, and you can't in good conscience allow them to borrow the car. You can't in good conscience give them an allowance. They're 23 years old and I think it has to just be bluntly put that they need to know they're pretty much on their own if they're going to keep acting like that. Our next story is, am I the jerk for blaming our house getting TP'd on my husband who gave toothbrushes instead of candy? So this Halloween, my 28 year old female, husband who's a dentist, 31 year old male, wanted to try something new instead of filling the bowl with candy, he filled it with toothbrushes and toothpaste. I told him this idea would turn out terribly because I know myself that as a child and a middle school teacher, all that I wanted for Halloween is candy and definitely not good tooth care, but he convinced himself that it would be great because what kids wouldn't like to get on Halloween night? Toothache. Well, he did it and he was surprised to find that only one boy or two thanked us. The others were pretty annoyed with this and some demanded candy so much that I had to bring them a candy bowl or else they wouldn't have stopped crying. They only got more frustrated and annoyed when my husband told them that they have to get at least one toothbrush when they get candy. It was kind of a disaster. Then, when it was all over and kids stopped coming to our house and we went to bed, we heard something, only to find out that some brats threw toilet rolls and eggs over the house and ran away. We spent a long while cleaning it up, and I told him that he should have just given them candy like I told him to. And he's been mildly upset by all of this, saying that I'm acting like a jerk. But to be honest, he was the one acting like a jerk. I'm a middle school teacher, and he should have just listened to me as he had no extended experience with kids like I am. Am I the jerk? I think OP is not the jerk, but I do kind of feel a little bad for him, I'm not gonna lie. They're a dentist, and... I genuinely believe from the way OP's written this that it sounds like they were doing this from a place of genuine excitement and good intentions. But OP was absolutely right. Kids want candy on Halloween and they're going to be devastated if you give them anything but that. It's almost a slap in the face to all those kids to give them toothbrushes and toothpaste. At the very least, you should have given out candy and then the toothbrush and paste. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my sister I'm not going to invite her parents to my graduation just to have her there? 
It's early to have this fight, but it's one we've been having because I no longer live with her. Background, my sister and I were under five when our parents divorced. I was four at the time and she was one. Two years later, our mom was in a horrific car accident that changed our lives forever. My father was already married again at the time, and they made the decision, him and his wife, to have her take over and raise us as their own children together. Even though my mom did nothing wrong and was technically still alive, just critically ill. My mom was left permanently disabled by her injuries, and she was in the hospital for almost a year and spent a further three-ish years in rehabilitation, learning how to function again. During all of this, my sister and I were not allowed to see or speak to our mom, and in this time, my sister decided that my father's wife was her real mother, and that mom was just dad's ex-wife, which was encouraged by him and his wife. Mom was able to get to a place where she could ask the court for time with us. It started out supervised because of her disability, and the time it had been since we'd seen her, But the damage was done with my sister and her. My sister didn't want to spend time with her, didn't want her so-called mom. She would yell at me for hugging mom or calling her mom and would say that I was hurting our mom. It crushed mom. It crushed her in a way I still remember at that young age. It also made me very angry at my father and his wife. The custody situation was fought back against by my father and his wife who said mom's place in our lives interrupted our stability and family dynamic. We had to speak to many therapists and a gal of the courts. I was spoken to by a social worker and the judge on the case. In the end, it was decided that it was in my best interest to see my mom and have a relationship with her, but that it was in my sister's best interest not to and to have things go back to the way they were. No contact with mom for her. Mom was heartbroken and my father was furious that mom would get access to me. Today, I'm 18, in my senior year of high school, and I now live with my mom and have cut off my father and his wife. I still talk to my sister, but our relationship is very strained. We no longer feel like sisters. We almost feel like step-siblings because we don't claim the same parents anymore. That includes my father. She's talked about graduation and how she wants to be there, but she doesn't want to go with mom. She wants her parents there. I don't want them there. I don't want them in my life at all. She said she can't come otherwise. I told her I would not invite her parents just to have her there. I could hear her cry after I said it and she was mad at me for picking mom over my real family. I feel bad. Despite how messed up this all is, I still love my sister even though I'm not sure we can ever be close again. I don't want to hurt her. Am I the jerk? This is a very mixed up tough situation but overall i think op's not the jerk it's honestly sad to hear about the erasure that the father and the stepmom did like some real hardcore brainwashing i would hope that op wouldn't completely cut off their sister but if they make these contingencies i don't blame op for saying no our next story is am i the jerk for not wanting to let my daughter have her wedding on my property i 57 retired to south america five years ago My kids are adults, and we aren't really close. Mostly my fault. I worked away from home, so they were raised mostly by their moms. I bought an acreage called a finca, and I rent it out for events. I have an outdoor dance floor, a pool, and a 20-person guest house. I also built up some areas for pictures. I live in my own house on the property. So now the conflict, I refuse to let any of my family stay with me anymore. I did for the first year, and they all abused my goodwill. They wouldn't clean up after themselves, they would pick fruit off my trees and then waste them, they wouldn't listen when I told them not to go in the pool on Mondays because that was cleaning day, and a whole bunch of other things. My daughter wants to have her wedding here. My house looks like Casita from the Disney movie Encanto. She is obsessed with it because my granddaughter looks like Mirabelle from that movie. So she wants to have a destination wedding on my property, which I would be fine with I think. But she then tells me that her guests will stay there for a week before the wedding, and that since they're paying for the flights, they shouldn't have to pay for a place to stay as well. Yeah, I'm not super happy about that. So I say they can do it one of two ways. They can pay me to have extra staff on hand to clean up after them and cook for them, or they can have the ceremony, pictures, and reception here, and then stay at a hotel. I even volunteered to pick up the bill for the hotel. 
It would cost me more than what I would earn from renting out my place, but it would be worth it not to deal with the headache of entitled people. I let her bring her friends down here when she graduated university, and they left the place in shambles. I found an entire bunch of bananas in the pool. Not a bunch like in a grocery store, like 60 bananas. They ripped it off a plant and threw it in the pool. These were all human adults. Her mom's calling me a jerk for holding it against her. My son, her half-brother, is posting about how I'm a miserable guy sitting down here not wanting to see my family. Not true. When he came down with his girlfriend, I put them up at a nice hotel about 20 minutes away. Why? Because I had to pay for my pool guy to fix my filter pump because his girlfriend's underwear were stuck in it the last time he came down. I know I sound like a grumpy old man, but I don't think that makes me a jerk. I don't think it makes OP the jerk either. Even though they own this lovely land and their family and they usually rent it out for other people, these unrelated people don't have some kind of extra assumed authority over being able to get away with trashing the place. In a way, considering OP makes money from this exchange normally, I guess you could say it kind of is like work. And a very common saying is you don't mix work and family, lest it can be pretty messy. This next story is, am I the jerk for taking our son trick-or-treating without my wife? My 29-year-old male, wife, 30-year-old female, and I have a 4-year-old son. As Halloween approached this year, my son let me know that he wanted to dress up as characters from his favorite show at the moment. These aren't costumes that are readily available to buy, so I was going to have to do some crafting magic and make them. I'm a stay-at-home father, and my wife is something of a workaholic. She could cut down on her hours if she wished, but she's always been a very work-driven and focused person. She's not very maternal. Because of this, my son's never been very attached to her. They have time together at dinner, but even during times when my wife's off work, like during bath time and bedtime, it's always just me. This isn't me complaining. I've signed on for the stay-at-home dad life, and I enjoy every minute of it. I just wish, for his sake, that she would be more involved. About a month before Halloween, my son asked if my best friend, 35-year-old male, could dress up with us. He'd already assigned himself and me a specific character, and I'd started work on the costumes, so I figured it wouldn't be a big deal to add one more. He adores best friend. They have such a sweet bond and have since my son was born. I asked best friend if he wanted to join us trick-or-treating, and he immediately agreed. During dinner the night following this, I asked him what character he wanted his mom to be. My son said he only wanted to go trick-or-treating with daddy and best friend. Over the course of the next month, I would casually bring it up again to my son and he continually gave the same answer. My wife was very clearly hurt but would always brush it off. Fast forward to Halloween night, I'd spent weeks working on these little costumes for all of us. As we were getting ready, my wife and I got into a big argument over the fact that she didn't have a costume. I pointed out that if she had wanted me to make her one, she could have requested I do so, or she could have gotten one for herself. She said it was ridiculous that the three of us were doing a matching theme and leaving her out of it, and that she wasn't even going. In the end, best friend and I took him trick-or-treating alone, and my wife still isn't speaking to me because she can't believe I actually went without her. Am I the jerk? I'm gonna have to say OP is the jerk here. I would have liked to have seen them fight more for their wife to be included. I'm not saying put their foot down and say, son, you're going to do this and you're gonna like it. But just say, you know, it would mean a lot to you to include mom. And let's figure something out and let's pick a character out together if we've got to. The bottom line is about making it clear to your kid that mom is very much part of the family and you can't choose to exclude her. Although it goes without saying, you would like to see the mom be a little bit more involved. Our next story is, am I the jerk for leaving the thrift store with an item I paid for? I went into my local thrift and immediately found a piece of furniture I wanted. In the past, I've been through the furniture section and seen receipts attached to items saying they've been sold already and are no longer available. This was not the case with this table. Stoked, I asked an employee to help me move it to the register so I can pay for it. A nice dude helps me out by putting it on a dolly and rolling it up front for me. I pay for it, and he starts pushing the dolly out to my car. Lady comes out of the store behind us, and she is pissed. She comes up with a temper, yelling that it's her table that we're wheeling out to my car. Confused, because there's no sold tag on this thing, I ask her if she also paid for it. She says no, but I told the manager I wanted it and she set it aside for me. 
I feel awkward at first and just kind of freeze there for a minute while she goes back in to get the manager. I considered going in and refunding it and giving it back. I did think about it. I actively decided that since I paid for it, I'd essentially called dibs and that the store manager should have had the woman pay for the item and put a receipt on the item as they've done in the past. So I look at the dude helping me lug this thing out to my car. He looks stunned and is clearly going to wait to see what happens. I decide not to wait. I tell him I'm not going to make him be any more involved and I just pick up my furniture and start walking to the car. As soon as I'm finished loading it into the car, the manager comes out with the woman. The manager asks me expectantly if I'm going to give the furniture back to the lady. I ask the manager if the lady paid for it. She says no, but we did put it on hold for her. I told her there was no signage indicating it was sold, it wasn't moved off of the floor, and no one stopped me when I asked for help moving it and checked out. The manager then tells me that if I don't go back in and return the table, that I'm banned from this thrift store and to never come back. So, I told her that I'm sorry that her staff had made a mistake, but that I had no intention of returning the item I paid for. Got in my car and noped out. I clearly upset this lady by not refunding and giving back this table. I feel bad that she was upset, but I did it anyway. I know I didn't commit a crime by taking a table I paid for, but am I the jerk? Should I have just given it to her? I think considering OP paid for it, whether they gave it back or they took it, they were completely in the right. I really think it's as simple as that. It might have been a mix-up, but the workers and you had no indication to know that. And frankly, I haven't heard of too many stores that allow the staff to claim things during work hours. Most places I've heard of that allow staff to actually purchase things in the store usually make you wait and see if the item survives the workday and lets you buy it after work hours. It's just not fair to the number one person that they need to appeal to, the customer. That said, our final story of the day is, am I the jerk for removing my pre-weight loss pictures from my mom's house after she refused to take them down? I, 21-year-old female, have struggled with my weight my entire life. I'm not talking about baby weight. I mean that I was 200 pounds at 5'1 when I was 16. For as long as I could remember, I felt uncomfortable in my own body. When I went to college, I decided it was time to change. It took years of grueling work and education, but I'm finally at a healthy weight. I'm terrified of going back. The only problem is that my mom, 55-year-old female, has tons of family photos around the house. Every time I go home, I'm reminded of the most emotionally difficult time of my life. I begged my mom to at least take down the photos that only have me in them, but she refused. I decided to take matters into my own hands. Every time I came to visit, I gradually put stickers over my face in family pictures. She didn't notice, so I decided to take it up a notch. I scanned the original pictures with my phone. I paid one of my friends to photoshop them afterward. They were pretty obvious, but I was hoping nobody would notice at a glance. After the swap, I took the originals to my apartment. I got away with this two times, but I got caught in the act with the third. My mom and I got into a huge argument about it. She said that I had no right to take those photos or vandalize the others because it wasn't my house. I pointed out that I only took my photos and only put removable stickers on the others. She was still furious. I'm banned from the house until I give the originals back. The rest of my family has been pressuring me to give in because Thanksgiving is coming up. If I refuse to do so, because I don't think I'm in the wrong here, Am I the jerk? She's obese and has made weird comments about my weight loss. Ever since I lost the weight, she calls me vain a lot. One time, we were sitting for dinner with my aunt. My aunt and I were discussing my weight loss, and my mom suddenly chimed in, Okay, I think that's enough time spent stroking your ego. Another time, she insisted on giving me a coat that was three times too big. When I said no, she asked if I thought I was too good for it. So considering everything OP said here and the extra things they chimed in on at the end, which honestly, if anything, just seemed like some extra emotional attempts to make OP not look as bad, I feel like OP's pretty clear cut here the jerk. I completely understand not wanting to see these pictures and that it's reflective of a time that was harder for OP because of internal things, but this is their mom. Their mom clearly loves them and loves seeing them at any stage in their life. 
I could understand trying to petition to get these pictures taken down, to be put in a place where you can't necessarily see them yourself, but taking them off the wall, photoshopping, replacing them, removable stickers or not removable stickers, it's still a bit of vandalizing. I think all of that is way too far, and these pictures are cherished and valuable to the mom. I think it's entirely a jerk move to try to erase all of that, if anything just because your mom wants to see those, and clearly loves those moments. Am I the jerk for walking out of my husband's birthday party after he started laughing at me? I, female 32, just completed my treatment for a medical issue that affected my body. I'd gained weight due to this medical condition and also medication and none of my old clothes were fitting anymore. I bought new fitting clothes, but for my husband's birthday party, he asked me to wear one of my old dresses that was one of his favorites. To appease him, I said yes, although I didn't feel comfortable wearing it, especially after the weight gain. He was at the restaurant with his family and friends when I arrived with my sister. As soon as he saw me walking in, he busted out laughing. He pointed at the dress and was going hysterical saying, oh my god, I felt so incredibly mad especially when the others started laughing as well. One of his friends started whistling in a mocking tone. I turned around instantly and walked out and my sister followed me. I went home and cried a little, but he kept calling non-stop. He came home and started talking about how oversensitive I was and that it was just a natural reaction he had upon seeing me in the stress again after all this time. He said I overreacted and made a scene over nothing. He also said I ruined his birthday and urged me to get therapy for this oversensitivity that I'm inflicting upon him. Am I the jerk? Did I overreact? He's so upset he's refused to even receive the gift. Considering OP clarified that it wasn't like his breath was taken away, it wasn't a good, oh my god, it was a giggling one, I think OP's not the jerk. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy hard-hitting, tough-to-answer, am I the jerk here stories then why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for not giving my sister 50% of my small business? I started a small business in July of 2020, and about eight months in, I hired my older sister to do some administrative work for me. She recently had a baby and wasn't planning on returning to work, but still needed a little money. She asked if there was anything she could do to help the business, and I said yes. Her responsibilities included answering some emails, organizing existing spreadsheets, and reaching out to other businesses, which was her background, but none of the reaching out led anywhere. She clocked about 5 to 8 hours of work per week, and I paid her $25 an hour. I still created the product for the client, answered follow-up emails from the client, handled the financials, and ran the social media and website. About a year in, we decided to do a rebrand. We hired someone to make a new logo and I built a new website. About five months before the launch of the rebrand, she asked if we could get something in writing, an employment contract, and also expressed an interest in owning a part of the business. I told her we could definitely get something in writing and I would think about the part ownership. Three months later, I suggested a 70-30 split, to which she disagreed. She said she was looking for a 50-50. I said I was definitely not comfortable with a 50-50 and the highest I would ever go would be 51-49. She responded with, what was the point of being a part owner when your decision would still be the final say? Again, I told her I would think about it. Two weeks before the launch of the rebrand, I was talking to my husband and made the comment about having to give her 50% to keep the peace. He advised me to write down my financial contribution to the company versus hers. Obviously, the financial, let alone time commitment, was staggering. I presented her with a spreadsheet of tiers to buy into the company. 10% for free, and then tiered payments all the way up to 49%. She was very angry, saying that I'd blindsided her, betrayed her, and even went as far as to say that she built my business. I've apologized for not bringing it up until the week before the launch, but she refuses to speak to me. She refuses to come to family Thanksgiving or Christmas, and it's tearing my family apart. Honestly, I'm of the opinion that it's already more than generous giving 49% of the company to them. And let's be real, I think most situations where you're 50-50, unless you're properly 50-50 here, you kind of need somebody to have that 1% so things can just kind of keep moving. 
A proper 50-50 split here, I feel it has the potential to be incredibly messy here. I think OP's not the jerk. They didn't even really do any of the groundwork to get the company to the point where it currently is. They didn't invest in it, they didn't take a loan out for the company. 49% is already beyond generous. This next story is, am I the jerk for leaving my baby shower early and causing a scene? I'm 32 year old female, my husband of 7 years, 32 year old male, and I are pregnant. We have one previous child, Anne, 6 year old female, who has epilepsy. She's had one seizure before, relevant later in the story. To be honest, my mother-in-law is horrible, she gives backhanded compliments, insults me and my looks and always tries to set my husband up with other people. The last time we went to her place, she said she could make my husband a Tinder account or set him up with some girl who's the daughter of mother-in-law's best friend. My husband has told her to stop, but doesn't do anything else. Newsflash, she doesn't stop. When sending invites to my baby shower, I told my husband I didn't want my mother-in-law there. He told me, since you're not letting my own mother be in the room with you when you're giving birth, you have to invite her to this. You should be grateful that you get a baby shower at all. Also, he wouldn't even be at the baby shower as he has something at work. At the baby shower, I was telling everyone how our baby was once again a girl. My mother-in-law then decided to say, wow, another girl. Let's hope she's not like her sister. I asked what she meant by that, and she said, we don't need any other diseases in the family. Imagine seeing a newborn baby drop to the floor and shake everywhere. It's embarrassing. At first, I was honestly confused as she had clearly zero idea what she was talking about. But then the pregnancy hormones really kicked in, and I started crying hysterically. I left my friend's house and my mother drove me home. Once I got home, I saw my husband there. I didn't know why he was home and not at work, but I just didn't stop crying. He said, where are all the gifts? You do realize how expensive some baby things can be. I honestly couldn't believe he said that of all things, so I decided to lock myself in our bedroom. About 10 minutes later, he tells me he got a text from his mother explaining what happened. He told me that I caused a scene and should be happy I got to meet up with some friends today. I tried explaining how wrong what she said was and how he insulted our daughter, an unborn baby. He said, well, Anne's epilepsy medication isn't cheap so I can see why she said what she said. You just interpreted it wrong. Apologize to my mother. I packed a bag and called my mother to pick me up. I'm currently at her place and she's picking Anne up from school. My husband and his family keep blowing up my phone and calling me a drama queen along with other hateful names. So I need to ask, am I the jerk? I think OP's definitely not the jerk and I feel like the husband has a clear cut case of mama's boy syndrome. I guess they believe their mom is so infallible they're willing to try to twist things in their own mind to try to explain it away. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my stepdaughter she's lucky I treat her as my own? I, 44 year old female, have two children with my husband, a 2 year old boy, a 3 year old girl, and a bonus daughter, 18 year old female Emily. My stepdaughter Emily has been living with us for 6 months this past year. She moved in because she told us her mother kicked her out since they didn't have a good relationship and her mother said she was too problematic. Since her moving in, I've been very welcoming and I've spent more than enough money to help Emily get on her feet. This includes work shoes, comforter sets for her bed, hair products, clothing and underwear. We told her that she could live here as long as she needed, but since her moving here, she's become a burden to both my children and I. My children and I are used to a regimen of waking up, spending time with my husband, him dropping them off to daycare, and he goes off to work, and when he gets home I cook, clean, and we spend the rest of the night with the kids. My stepdaughter has become a burden, she's become entitled and whenever she needs anything financially, she'll ask either myself or my husband. When I bought her work uniform, she kept the job for 3 weeks and then quit because she didn't like her co-workers. She's taken most of my savings, taken the time from my children to my husband, and used that time for herself and has been extremely unappreciative for what I've done for her. I told her that she needed to figure out a living plan because she is 18 and a legal adult and that she needs to start adulting. She mentioned how she was in school, online, 
and I told her that wasn't enough, since there are more hours in the day, and she can do more than just be lazy all day and use her computer as an excuse. She told me that I'm jealous of her relationship with my husband, and I reminded her that she's living in our home rent-free. I told her that she should be lucky that I treat her as my own, because not everyone would do such with their stepchild. Am I the jerk for telling my niece my husband and I are not going to her birthday because my husband isn't welcome? I've been with my husband for 10 years. We've been married for 5 of those years. He suffered horrific trauma at the hands of his dad. His parents were married and expecting twins when his mom suffered some kind of hemorrhage and she ended up with eclampsia. My husband's mom and twin sister did not make it, but my husband did after a period of time in the NICU. His dad told him it was his fault they died. He had grandparents who meant the world to him and tried to shield him from his dad's anger, but when he was 8 years old, they died also. His father then blamed him. He spent the next 10 years hearing day after day that he was the reason. At no point did he have another person to reassure him it wasn't. When we met, he had just started to heal. He was away from his dad and attending therapy. It was a very big fear of his that what his dad said was true. He is a wonderful man and my nieces and nephews adore him. He was always so good with them and the rest of my family. In January 2020, I was pregnant and we went for a scan where we learned I'd miscarried. As soon as my husband heard this, something inside of him broke. He started to unravel. He was in the middle of a mental health crisis. He was doing this weird manic laugh that was also a sob. He ran out of the room and I followed after him concerned. My mom and sister both work at the hospital. Sister's a nurse while mom worked in the little gift store. Both saw him in this worst moment. They saw as medical personnel were forced to intervene because he was in the middle of a breakdown, hysterical and totally out of it. He was totally broken and nothing could reach him. It was the scariest moment of my life, the worst moment of his. And they judged him for laughing. Then when they told the rest of the adults in my family, they also judged him. All of my family were aware of his history. He told them about it years ago. My husband ended up under the care of a psychiatrist who suggested he needed a lot more help than therapy could provide. Instead of understanding, my family no longer wanted him around. They said a man who could laugh at his own wife's miscarriage was not the kind of man they wanted around the kids. I told them I would not leave him behind. My niece is turning 12 this year and is having her first big party since COVID. She called and said that she wanted us there, but she hadn't seen us on her mom's list. I told her we wouldn't be able to come and that I was sorry. We both were. She was upset and asked why she never saw us, why we wouldn't come to her birthday party, why we missed them all now. I told her that my husband was not welcomed by the other adults in the family anymore. She apparently yelled at her parents and mine. Then I got crap from them for telling her what I did. They said I had no business saying that. Am I the jerk? OP's definitely not the jerk for just telling the truth to their niece. If every single other adult in this family is utterly ashamed of the truth coming out to an innocent 12 year old, then yeah, maybe they need to rethink about what they did and the way they're treating OP's husband. But OP and their husband are definitely not the jerks and I hope things get better from them from here on out. Our next story is, am I the jerk for moving away from my parents after they gave away my cat without my consent? I loved my cat to death. His name was Milo and he was more than just a pet to me. He was like another family member. My parents never liked my cat and constantly said that one day they would send him away while I'm away at work. I told them if they ever did something like that, I would pack my bags and move in with my friend from college. So I come back one day to see that my cat is nowhere to be found. I instantly assume the worst and confront my parents. To my shock, they told me they sold him away to some rando off Facebook and they refused to give me the buyer's information. Feeling betrayed by my own parents, I quickly get all of my basic necessities and leave the following day to my friend's place. Now I'm getting constant text messages from my siblings calling me a terrible brother for leaving the house over a pet. Was I wrong to value my cat the same way I value my other family members? 
I think OP is definitely not the jerk. I would be feeling the same way as them, and I think OP didn't do enough. I think OP should have tried their best to get access to their Facebook accounts. I mean, the realistic thing, I don't think too many people buy cats, usually. I think they more likely than not gave them away. At the worst, if you can somehow prove that this cat was your property, I would threaten calling the cops. What do you have to lose? I would also be checking around at shelters, because first of all, you can't even trust these parents to begin with. They probably lied about selling them. I mean, for all you know, maybe they drove a mile down the road and let the cat out. This next story is, am I the jerk for not covering Thanksgiving for a narc? At my workplace, we regularly bribe each other to trade shifts. Usually it's like a good bottle of wine or booze or a gift certificate for a restaurant, but it can be cash. We keep it on the down low and it works. We do IT services for financial companies, so Thanksgiving weekend is sort of important. So one of my coworkers does not like to pay to trade shifts, but has before. They always complain about how it's not fair that people like me who are unmarried and have no kids get holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas off. Sorry ma'am, but even though I don't have kids, I am one. Maybe my parents want to see me too. So anyway, my parents are actually going to Bermuda this Thanksgiving because that's where my sister is and she just had a baby. I would love to go but I don't have enough vacation time to make it worthwhile. Instead I have plans with friends. They aren't super important to me, we're just going to eat turkey and watch all the Thanksgiving episodes of Friends. I mentioned this to another coworker, and the other one overheard. It's her turn to be in the office and on call for the holiday. She couldn't find anyone to cover her shift. So she basically begged me to cover for her. I liked my plans, so I said no. She finally offered me money. Well, if the Simpsons have taught me anything, it's that money can be exchanged for goods and services. So we haggled and then agreed. She would take my New Year's Eve shift and give me a couple of hundred dollars to cover her from Thursday to Sunday. Win-win, I thought. Two days later, my boss comes over and asked me if I wanted to change the schedule, as I had agreed. I asked why he was getting involved, as we usually just handled it amongst ourselves. He said that he'd gotten a complaint that I extorted money out of a coworker for covering their shift. He said that while it wasn't against company policy, it was frowned upon. I said that I understood, and that no money had changed hands, and that no, I didn't want to change shifts. My boss was promoted from the ranks, so he knew the score. He knows how we trade shifts, so he was cool. My coworker, not so much. She started bugging me, saying that she had already told her parents that her family would be coming, and that I would be a jerk for not covering like I said I would. I told her that someone had gone to the boss and tattled on our deal, so I couldn't follow through since I could get in trouble. She said that I could do it for free. I declined. She said that she would pay me more than we agreed on. I said, no thanks, I don't want any trouble. So now she's acting all pissy because I won't work for her, and now she's being shut out of the regular shift trading because everyone knows she tried to use the boss to screw me over. She says that I'm a jerk for not following through. I think she's a jerk for trying to change a deal she agreed to. I think it's completely reasonable the way they handle things here. This isn't extorting, this is making it worth their while. Extorting would be something that you're forced to do. OP isn't forcing them to do anything. Being annoyed and going to the boss is such an annoying thing. OP's definitely not the jerk. I would say after everything that went on, I would enjoy that day off even more so. This next story is, am I the jerk for keeping in the house children and teenagers until the police arrived and charged them? I, male, have a house with a pool that I rent on weekends or throw parties. The kitchen and swimming pool are on the outside. Friday, I went to the market to buy drinks, meats, and various things, because Sunday there would be a party in the house, so the fridge had a lot of things. On Saturday, my brother called asking if I'd rented the house this Saturday for someone, and when I said no, he informed me that he passed by and heard very loud music in it, in addition to several voices. I asked him to meet me there, and I went with my husband. There were about 20 people enjoying the pool, drinking, and having a barbecue with my stuff. Apparently they used a ladder to jump over the wall. The wall had a broken fence and will be replaced tomorrow. It's the only wall that faces the street. 
When they saw us, they started to get even more desperate that my brother had the ladder. They tried to escape, but we kind of protected the wall. The police had already been called, so we didn't want anyone to escape. Nothing happened to anyone to make it clear, they just tried to get past us to go to the lowest wall but couldn't. The police arrived, there were 7 children, 6 to 13 years old, 12 adolescents, 14 to 17 years old, and 1 adult, 39 years old. Those responsible for the minors were called and this caused a mess as they started to accuse us of holding minors in my house when I'm not a police authority. The police gave me freedom to press charges or not. I said I just wanted the value of the items consumed, paid for a cleaning lady and cleaning the pool. Yes, it would cost a high value because the outside area was a mess and almost everything was used in the fridge. The adults began to say that just scolding from the police would be enough and that I know how stupid young people can be and begged me not to charge that amount as most of them were extremely poor. I stood by my decision, saying that they would have until today, Monday, to pay for my damage. Otherwise, I would press charges against everyone. Yes, I heard a lot of curses, but today, I received the full amount. My husband said that I was very harsh because I paid out of my pocket anyway, there was the party anyway, and that for us, there would be no difference with that money, but for extremely poor families, there would be. I really don't think it's fair to have this expense, despite being able to pay without any weighing on my pocket. Young people are stupid, but they still broke into a house, used everything in it, and left a mess. Am I the jerk? I think OP is not the jerk. And poor family or not, I'm sorry, but that doesn't excuse what they did, which was breaking and entering. That's a very serious thing. I honestly would have said if OP didn't hold them at least accountable for the stuff they used and the cleaning, that they would have been doing society a disservice. I mean, how in what world, kids or not, would it be okay to let them slide for breaking and entering? Our next story is, am I the jerk for having my daughter's first birthday the same day as my stepsister's wedding? My mom got remarried after my parents' divorce and her new husband brought along my stepsister. I lived with my dad mostly because I didn't want anything to do with a new sibling and had pretty much no relationship with her and hated that my mom treated her like a daughter. I wasn't the nicest to her, but I felt like she was taking my place. Fast forward to now, she's getting married. I wasn't invited since we have no relationship. Whatever, I didn't invite her to mine either. The issue is that I planned my daughter's first birthday, and when I told my mom, she said it can't be that day, because it's my stepsister's wedding, and can we change it to the next weekend so people don't have to choose which to go to? I said no, my stepsister's wedding is at 8pm, my daughter's party is at 1pm. People can do both, but almost everyone on my mom's side RSVP'd no to her birthday party because of the wedding and travel. Even my own mother said she can't make it because she'll be at the stepsister's wedding getting ready all day. I'm pissed. How can she choose a stepdaughter over her own grandchild? Everyone's picking this girl who isn't even really family over my daughter. My mom says to just change the party but I think it's ridiculous that they can't do both and won't change my schedule for my stepsister. And my daughter will be the one to suffer when not one of her family's at her first birthday party. Okay, so I think not only is OP the jerk for not just working around this and scheduling a day later or a day earlier, but OP is so loaded saying, oh, well, my daughter's gonna suffer. It's their first birthday party. They're not gonna remember it. Let alone the fact that you're trying to discredit somebody for being step family. Oh, they're not real family. Well, thanks for letting them know how you feel. Our next story is, am I the jerk for making my 16-year-old daughter get a job? I, 43-year-old female, have 5 kids, but only Rachel, 19-year-old female, and Rose, 16-year-old female, are important to this story. My kids are homeschooled. Rachel finished her A-levels at 18, like normal school, but Rose finished her A-levels at 16. She's unable to go to university straight away like Rachel, as they only accept 18+. So instead of letting my daughter lie in bed all day, watching TV like she started off with, I let her have a month break because she's worked hard, I got tired of it and told her it was time to get a job. It would look good for university and she could start saving up some money for the future. She said that she doesn't want a job, she knows the university will want her as she has perfect grades. 
A or A star in all four of her A levels. I let her choose by herself for a month, but now I cannot deal with her lying in bed all day. I sat down with her and we made our university application together. I pointed out that she has no work experience, gently might I add, and then she started telling me to get off her back and she'll get a job soon. Rachel messaged me telling me that Rose is annoyed at me for always telling her to get a job and how it's unrealistic to expect a 16 year old to get a job. I'm concerned I'm the jerk because she is 16 but I don't think I am because she can't expect to get into uni just because of her grades. She needs some kind of work experience as well. I'm actually confused here because the people have voted that OP is the jerk, but I think after letting them have a month or two off, kind of like a summer break, they have two years of nothing before they're 18. I think OP suggesting that they should look into getting a job or volunteering would be honestly the expected thing. Like, they might be mad and thinking, oh, OP's always nagging me to get a job, but, I mean, are they trying to? Are they wanting to look into anything? What else is OP as a parent supposed to do other than encourage them to continue moving forward with their life instead of chilling out for the next two years? At least doing some volunteering work would look great on their CV. That said, our final story of the day is, am I the jerk for telling my mom she only has one kid? My parents divorced when my sister, 20-year-old female, and I, 19-year-old male, were five and six years old. She met her new husband three years later. He was a widower with a seven-month-old son. I think he was seven months old when they met. She instantly moved them in and started claiming his son as her own and raising him like us. She got engaged to him, and a few weeks before the wedding, our dad died. By this point, my mom had just become estranged from her entire extended family. She told my dad's parents that if they wanted to see us again soon, they would need to come to her wedding and watch all three of us, including my stepbrother. She then told them after the wedding that going forward, if they wanted to see us or spend time with us, they had to include my stepbrother. They hadn't wanted to. They tried to argue for time with just us, offering to pay for it all 100% but mom said no. She said they needed to come to the house and make an effort with all three, and not just take two with them. My sister and I would argue with mom over one day in particular, my dad's birthday. We celebrated that every year with dad's family after he died, but she wouldn't even let that day be just us and them. Our stepbrother had to be there. She said that they didn't get to just be our family and we shouldn't see him as any less deserving of being present. But we did. He wasn't our dad's kid, and had never met him. So why was he deserving of being there? I never got that. She called us selfish for that mindset. Last year I turned 18, and I moved in with my girlfriend. Once I left home, my stepbrother was no longer invited to anything to do with my dad's family. He no longer saw them. My sister and I also stopped spending any time at mom's house, then we stopped speaking to them at all. It was quiet for several months, and then last week, mom showed up where I work and demanded we talk. She told me how she was tired of one of her kids being left out and how sick it was to discard him that way, and why wasn't my sister and I advocating for him? I told her she only had one kid, her stepson and that my sister and I were no longer her kids, and my family were no longer forced to include him to see us, and that it was all her fault for forcing it in the first place. Then I wished her luck, which was kinda sarcastic, not gonna lie, and then asked her to leave. She texted me later that night to say she'd been a good mom to all three of us, and to say that she only had one kid was low. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk, I think it's unfair to try to force anybody to love or see anybody in a role that they legitimately aren't. If you're going to try to play games with kids, who they can and can't celebrate things with, and not even with the kids, with their grandparents also, it shouldn't be surprising that as they grow up, they grow to resent you. I'm just not surprised things turned out the way they did, and I think OP's not the jerk. Am I the jerk for making my ex a birthday cake, even though his girlfriend told me she had already ordered one? I'm an amateur baker, and I like to make cakes for people for their birthdays. 
My ex doesn't like sweet stuff, but our kids like helping me make a cake for him, so I normally make one for him anyway for their sakes. This year, his girlfriend planned a party for him, and she told me that she had already ordered him a cake, so I didn't need to make one. I told her that was fine, but my daughter kept asking me when we would make her dad's cake, and was upset when I said we wouldn't, because she assumed that I didn't like my ex, and that's why I wouldn't make him one. Since the cake has always been more for the kids than for my ex, I decided to just make him a small one since it's not like he eats cake anyway, and I don't want my kids to think I ever dislike their dad. I told his girlfriend beforehand that I was going to make a small cake, and she told me not to, and that I couldn't bring it to the party. I told her I had to bring it to the party, as that's when the kids would give him his gifts. I offered to come early and give it to him before the other guests arrived, and then they could put it away, and nobody else would know about my cake, but she didn't agree with me and repeatedly told me not to bring it. I did take it with me in the end and now she keeps complaining to mutual friends that I did it on purpose to ruin the party and calling me weird for making him a cake after I was told not to. Am I the jerk? Personally, I think not the jerk. I think it was pretty clear that this was more for the kids and from the kids than it ever was OP, clinging to some reunion hope or something like that. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy hard-hitting, tough-to-answer, am I the jerk here stories, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for leaving my girlfriend stranded when she chose to ignore me? I, 27, went to a pumpkin patch with my girlfriend, 22, and a bunch of her friends. I was told it was a couple's thing, but I was the only guy there. That's fine, I'm okay with her friends. I'm past the whole cutesy date thing, but I like making her happy. But then they all start ignoring me. Every time I try to join the conversation or spend time with my girlfriend, I got frozen out like I was intruding. I asked her if she wanted to go do the corn maze with me and it was like I was some creepy guy at a bar. They all had to come along like I was trying to separate her. I totally was, but I don't think that's a bad thing. Anyways, they all decided to split up in the maze and my girlfriend went with them. Screw this noise, I could go catch the Seahawks game if I boogied. So I texted her that she had 5 minutes to respond to me or I was going back to town to watch the game and she could get a ride back with her friends. I was literally watching the second quarter before she responded. It took her that long to notice that I was gone. She said her friend would have to drive really far out of her way to drop her off, and that I should come get her. I was definitely over the limit, and I told her to get an Uber and I would pay for it. She said never mind and spent the night at her place instead. I just woke up to about 50 texts from her and her friends calling me a jerk for leaving without telling anyone. I did tell her, she just chose to ignore me. I'm kind of pissed that I wasted all that gas and time and we never even got to actually spend time together. I'm upset with her and her BS friends. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP's the jerk here and I think it's a little concerning that the girlfriend can't see or understand what exactly they did to OP. I feel like OP was almost being treated like a comfort toy. Like something to be there just because they want them to be there or it might like make them more comfortable to have them around. But that's it, they just want them to be there. They don't want to interact with them, they don't want to talk to them, do anything with them. They just want them there. Am I the jerk for not letting the mother of a disabled child in our parenting group? I'm in a group for disabled parents. The group's not for the parents of disabled children, it's for parents who have disabilities. While many of our members have a child or children with disabilities, that's not why they are in the group. The purpose of the group is to have a support network of other parents with disabilities, free of the stigma and condensation disabled people with children so often face. Last week, a woman messaged our group about joining, and we gave her the information for our next meetup. At the meetup, she arrived with her son, who was in a wheelchair. He was a very sweet boy, and he played well with the other kids. The mother sat on her phone for most of the meetup and didn't participate much in our discussion topic. During one of our attempts to include her in the conversation, she did mention that she's not disabled in any way. I mentioned that this group is for disabled parents, and she responded that her son is disabled. That's not really relevant. We moved on, but at the end of the meetup, we told her that she couldn't be a member of the group because it's a support group for parents with disabilities and she isn't disabled. She was very offended and kept talking about her son. 
One of the other members explained that this group isn't for the kids, it's for the parents. There are playgroups for disabled kids, but we're not that. Yes, our meetups are child friendly, but that's for logistic reasons. Because childcare is expensive. This group is our safe space, and she's intruding on it. She told us we were hypocritical C words for excluding her son, and left very upset. We feel bad, but also this isn't a playgroup, it's a support group. Were we unfair? I think this is one of those situations where it's awkward and it feels bad because it's kind of understandable why they would be confused and why maybe they would feel like they should be accepted here, but I also don't think there's any shame in turning them down because it's so clearly just not what she's in it for, let alone the fact that they didn't hardly participate. Am I the jerk for cancelling a wedding gift when the wedding was cancelled? My husband's sister was supposed to be married in September. I chose an item from the registry, but the exact item she added had a weird detail. She had explicitly mentioned previously needing option A, but on the registry she accidentally listed option B. So I asked her to make sure I got what she needed, so she knew exactly what I was planning to gift. Sadly, they've now broken up. The gift hadn't shipped yet anyway, so I cancelled it. This past week, she reached out to me about it. Since she knew I was purchasing it and we live far away, she was concerned that it had been delivered but that someone had stolen it. When I explained that I'd cancelled it, she was pretty upset. My mother-in-law has now reached out to us about it and feels that I was unkind to cancel the order. She feels that since my sister-in-law is clearly going through a difficult time and the holidays are approaching, it would have been more appropriate to let the gift reach her anyway. Obviously, these are unfortunate circumstances, but this was a substantial gift, $700, and pretty well above the threshold of what I'd normally spend for a typical holiday gift. Before it comes up, I'll mention short and sweet that my husband is in the military and currently deployed, so that's why he isn't a big piece in this puzzle, and I'm soloing this awkward adventure. It's really kind of a weird situation, and in like a weird way, maybe they could take it as like disapproval or disappointment or not ever having cared or something, but this was all about giving them a gift to celebrate their new marriage, right? Probably a gift that revolves around them moving in together or starting a life together. I just can't blame them for pulling back on a $700 gift when the reason for gifting it was cancelled. Otherwise, catch me in my grifting business of being engaged, getting close to the wedding day, and then cancelling last second. Thanks for the gifts. Am I the jerk for not attending my parents' anniversary dinner in order to tend to my wife? I'll be honest and say that this dilemma has put me in a bind, as I'm a very family-oriented person, and this situation deals with both ends of my family. Yesterday was my 28-year-old female, parents' 25th wedding anniversary, and because it's such a big year for them, they had planned a special dinner at a very nice restaurant, and invited everyone in the family, including my wife, 27, and I about a month in advance. Initially, despite my wife just giving birth to our twins a month before the invite, we decided that we would just get a babysitter so that we could attend. However, my wife's mother passed this past Tuesday, and although we knew that the cancer was making her very ill, and that this day would soon come, my mother-in-law's death still shook my wife's world. It was just her and her mom growing up, and they were the closest you could get, so it's safe to say that my wife has had one heck of a week dealing with her mother's passing, making arrangements, and raising and nursing two infants. So on Thursday, I'd informed my parents of the unfortunate tragedy and told them how hard my wife was taking it. And I apologized and told them that I didn't think we could make it because my wife just didn't have it in her to go out. At this point, my wife couldn't even open her eyes without crying. They did the usual, aww, we wish you could both be here, but assured me that they understood and wished my wife healing. I went to drop off their gift Friday morning and nothing but well wishes were said to me when I went. However, yesterday night, I received three voicemails from my mom crying, saying how she couldn't believe that I chose my wife over them and how she was disappointed and that if that was the case, then she didn't want to be in the lives of mine, my wives, or our kids. This shocked me in all aspects and I tried getting a better understanding of what was going on but whenever I tried to call my parents, I was met with hostility and negative comments. I love my parents, but I love my wife more. My wife is my other half, and she needed me. 
To me, staying with my wife and caring for our children was the right call in that situation. Was I wrong to have assumed that that was the right thing to do? I think OP is not the jerk. I think as wonderful as it would have been to have been there for your parents' 25th wedding anniversary, sometimes there's things that are just bigger than having a nice night out to celebrate. OP's wife was in a terrible situation, and not only that, but had a lot of responsibility trying to work with two infants. They shouldn't feel bad or guilted at all, and let's be real, it was the parents' anniversary. Whether or not OP could make it, it shouldn't have ruined their anniversary. Am I the jerk for not paying for a competition trip? I, 30 female, am married to my husband Joey, 34. We both have daughters from previous relationships. My daughter's name is Haley, 10, and his daughter's name is Jenna, 11. Both of our daughters are cheerleaders for different teams. We recently just had their competition where the winners of first and second place go to compete in Disney. I've been saving all year since Haley's team is really competitive. Joey didn't save for it because Jenna's on a smaller town team that's not very competitive. Haley's team unfortunately did not win their competition this year. Jenna's team did win theirs. Haley, my husband and I were all proud of her and congratulated her. Later that night, my husband asked me about finances for the Florida trip. We've always kept finances for the girls separate, as I pay for Haley and he pays for Jenna. I explained that since Haley's team didn't win, I figured her and I could go do something instead with the money I saved for Florida. Haley doesn't know this was my plan yet. My husband thinks I'm being selfish and a jerk because Jenna's team did win and we should use that same money for her to go. I think Haley could use a pick-me-up. I know people might ask about Jenna's mother and she's not able to help financially for Jenna to go. We've already spoken to her. Also, if any of the girls on the team cannot go to Florida, then the team has to forfeit. The team might do some fundraising, but the expense will be on the parents. Am I the jerk? I think it would really be nice to try to find some kind of compromise. But overall, I think OP's not the jerk, but it might cause some ripples in their whole dynamic in their relationship. I wish them the best, but from the get-go, considering they kept everything private, OP planned, the husband didn't. At the end of the day, it's not their fault whether they do or don't pay. Am I the jerk for canceling a credit card my mom used? My mother opened an account for me when I was 14. She had full access to it, and I've been saving up for around 4 years now. I tutor kids in primary, so I don't make much, but I still saved up as much as I could. My parents wouldn't let me get a real job because they're very conservative about girls working. Heck, I didn't even get a phone till I turned 18. It's not like I couldn't buy one. I had the money to, but in fear of my parents, I never did. Saying that, I couldn't really tell how much money I had in my account unless I physically went to the bank or asked my mom, who would just wave me off saying money doesn't matter and that it's very little. Recently, and I mean like literally in September, I got my first ever phone for my birthday. And they were reluctant about it too, but I'm starting university next year, so I need one so they had no choice either. I downloaded the app for my account to track my balance and stuff when I saw I only had $150 inside. It made no sense to me because I'd been saving for four years and I never requested a card from the bank because my parents said I wouldn't need one, so I never used any money either. I got a full bank statement and found out I originally had around $2,000 saved up. I called the bank saying I had some suspicious activity on my account and they looked into it. They told me those transactions were from my card, even though I never had one, and that all transactions were fine. I told my mother about it, and she just waved me off, saying she borrowed some cash from time to time. I told her it wasn't her money and that it was hard-earned money for me. She gave me a lecture about how she paid for my fees so I could be smart enough to even tutor kids, and that she let me tutor in the house so that cost money. When I told my dad about it, he said to think of it as parenting fees. I was beyond furious, so I cancelled my card and called the bank to cut off access to my bank account for my parents. They couldn't see my balance or even spend my money. It didn't even matter at that point because I had less than $200 in my account. A week goes by and my mother one day comes up to my room fuming, telling me how my card got declined when she was at the store and that it was embarrassing for her and that someone nearly called the cops on her because they thought it was a stolen card. 
I told her she should have been arrested for using up my money and that I don't care if she got humiliated. She told my father and now they're threatening to kick me out. I get that I'm 18, but I can't move out with like $100 in pocket. If I had my original amount of money, I'd gladly do it. I told them they had to cough up my money or I wasn't leaving. Instead, they called a family meeting with all of my relatives just to call me out and say how selfish I was for counting every dime and that money ought to be shared or some crap. Am I the jerk? OP went and worked for that money. They spent everything and then they try to classify it as some parent tax. Hey, sorry we spent all of your savings just all casual like. Just uh, call that a parent tax and don't get mad at us, okay, or else we'll kick you out. Sounds like some real parents of the year territory. OP's definitely not the jerk. Am I the jerk for misleading my snooping stepmom? For context, me, 16-year-old female, and my stepmom, 48-year-old female, do not get along and probably never will. My mom and dad broke up when I was two, and my dad met my stepmom when I was nine. My stepmom, who we'll call M, never really tried to get along with me, and no, my nine-year-old brain just told me that I shouldn't try and get along with her. She would ignore me and make passive-aggressive comments about me and my sister coming over for weekends, which eventually caused my sister to stop going. That and some mocking of my sister's anorexia. Back to the point, during COVID times, my dad convinced me to stay for a week in which me and my stepmom seemed to be bonding, so much so that I didn't think twice about typing in my password when she was next to me. After that, I would leave my phone to go to the toilet or grab a snack and open my phone to find my messages, Google history, or social media open because she never thought to close the apps. This started to piss me off because I gave my trust to her and thought that we were getting along. It all escalated to her looking at very private talks, which included me talking about my sexuality, I hadn't come out yet, and talks about my mental struggles. It all tipped me over the edge, so I decided to figure out a plan to get her to admit to what she'd been doing, because if I told my dad without proof, he wouldn't believe me. I would leave my phone open on Google with very scandalous searches, such as how to tell your stepmother that your dad is cheating, how to shoplift condoms, how to cover up tattoos with concealer, etc. But the one that caught my stepmother's attention was ending pregnancy clinics near me. She sat me down the next day and screamed at me that she knew I was pregnant and called me promiscuous. This caused me to yell back and when my dad got involved, I admitted to everything. My stepmom cried and screamed that I tricked her and that I was an ungrateful sinner. My dad just looked disappointed and told me to call my mom to pick me up. I thought I was in the right, but my dad's reaction has me thinking otherwise. Am I the jerk? I definitely think OP's not the jerk, and honestly, I think it's kind of sad that they felt the need to go to such lengths because they knew that their own father would not believe them. I think this stepmother has such a firm grip over the father, I just hope it doesn't damage OP's relationship with their dad. Am I the jerk because I baked my own birthday cake after my wife bought one? For my 32 year old male birthday, I always like one specific kind of cake, a chocolate covered cherry cake. My mom or dad always made it for me since it wasn't one of the available flavors at any bakeries or stores near me when we grew up. When I moved away, I started to make it myself. I've been married to my wife just under a year, but we've been together for six years so she knows all about this cake. During that time, we've either baked it together, my parents made it, or I've made it on my own. I've never asked or expected her to do it. Before my birthday this year, my wife asked me what kind of cake I wanted. Same kind as always, but she told me she didn't feel like baking. I told her she didn't need to worry about baking it because I can just do it myself. She asked me a second time, and I gave her the same answer. The day before my birthday, I get home from work and have all the ingredients to make my cake. I go get something out of the fridge and there's a pair of cheesecakes in there with happy birthday written between them both. I asked my wife about it and she said that those were the cakes for my party the next day. And she thought about switching things up this year since everyone loves cheesecake. I don't hate it, but she gets cheesecakes at least once a month. I only ever have the cherry cake on my birthday. I told her I appreciate it and they look good, but... I really want the cake I like, so I was going to make mine and we'll just let everyone have a choice of what cake they want. 
She got pissed off and yelled that I ruined her attempt to make things easier on us by not having to bake and bringing cake that everyone would love. It's been two days since the party, and she was cold at the party and is still acting cold. Usually I move mountains in heaven to give her the things she wants on her birthday and celebrate how she wants. I just wanted one specific cake for mine. Am I the jerk? One thing I definitely believe in is that you should have the cake that you want on your birthday. Even if you don't necessarily want a cake, you want some kind of alternative, I think you should be allowed to have that. It's just really weird that she's like shaming you for making your own cake. I think the truth is she just rather would have cheesecake. And she's doing this weird shaming thing like, oh, why would you work for your cake? Why do you have to bake it and try to make it this big deal? Because they just want to have an excuse to go get some more cheesecake. I think OP's definitely not the jerk. Am I the jerk for telling my husband to not come to Thanksgiving? I'm 33 year old female. Husband is the same age. He loathes Thanksgiving. He's a picky eater and doesn't like any of the options served except turkey. But even then, he insists that my family doesn't cook it right. He's no contact with his side of the family except for his brothers, so him going to see his family is not an option. My sister recently moved closer, so this year Thanksgiving is being held at her new house. This is the only reason that the holiday came up this early. I was showing him pictures of the house from the old Zillow listing and mentioned that I didn't want to overwhelm her by visiting so early and moving in and that I'd just wait to see it for real at Thanksgiving. My husband grumbled something about having to attend and talk with my family. He's barely tolerant of my extended family. He doesn't like their conversation topics, saying they all talk about themselves. They only talk about old people things. They say the same things every year. As far as I know, they've never said anything rude to him personally, but he still isn't crazy about my side. And we'll just kind of hang out and talk to my dad or brother or play with my nieces and nephews. Even if he did have a good conversation with my dad or played with my nephews, he'll still complain about having to see people he doesn't care about and see all the gross food we all eat. It's so difficult to listen to year after year. After he complained for a bit, I told him to just not come for Thanksgiving if he hates it that much. He sees all the members of my family that he likes for Christmas anyway. He looked offended at my suggestion and asked if I didn't want his company. I told him I love him being around, but not when he's not having fun and is going to complain at the end. He said I hurt his feelings to even suggest that he not come with me to something he's invited to. I told him that if he's not having fun at an event, that he has no obligation to attend. He doesn't have to come. He still insists that he's hurt and that he thinks now that I don't want him there. Am I the jerk? I really can't blame OP because if this has turned into a yearly occurrence of try to make it through this event and then afterwards deal with nothing but constant exhaustion and complaints and how they think things are so gross and tiresome and boring or whatever at some point you're just like i want to have a good time with family spare me from all of this stuff i think it does get to the point where you can't even enjoy it yourself because there's a whole back half of just total exhaustion coming immediately afterwards Am I the jerk for overruling my sister by approving my nephew's outfit for my wedding? My fiancé, male 27, and I, female 27, are getting married in early April. We're planning a big wedding with the help of both of our parents' financing. We invited all of our friends and family, including our siblings and their kids. My fiancé and I are very excited for our wedding. When it comes to the dress code, me and my fiancé are very laid back, We just want people to dress up in either a suit, dress, or something else fancy. We couldn't care less about the color or design and actually encourage our guests to dress creatively, colorfully, or over the top. Me and my fiancé are both creative people. I'm an art teacher and he works in advertising. We want people to express themselves and while we're okay with traditional color wedding outfits, we only want them being worn if it's truly something our guests like. I have many siblings and many nieces and nephews. My oldest sister and her husband, female 40 and male 40, have six kids. I still live close to all of my siblings, so me and my fiance have a close relationship with them and know that they're excited for our wedding. My 13 year old nephew is a good kid, has great grades and is the athlete of the family. As with most middle school boys, dressing up in a suit isn't exactly his favorite thing to do. 
And about a month ago, my sister called telling me he was giving them issues when suit shopping. I sat down with him and had a talk to see if everything was okay. He said he didn't like anything he saw, and I told him to ask his friends for advice. About a week after, I got a text from my nephew asking what he thought of his outfit idea. He wanted to go with a sports theme. He wanted to wear a normal dress shirt and pants, but for his blazer, have his favorite NFL team on it, a lacrosse tie and baseball cufflinks. He found all of this online and sent links. He told us his mom said no and then asked my opinion on it. I showed it to my fiance and we both agreed it was acceptable and we'd love to see him in it if that's what made him happy. A few hours later, I got a call from my sister asking why I would approve it after she said no and complain about how the outfit could reflect on her and how my nephew needed to learn proper wedding attire. I asked her and my nephew out to lunch the next day so we could settle it out. We went out to lunch and my nephew and sister were explaining how his friends recommended it and how he wanted to express his love for sports. After explaining to him that this isn't normal wedding attire, but fiance and I wanted people to be creative, my sister agreed to buy it and just got all the stuff in the mail and he loves it. My sister's still upset at me for trying to overrule her parenting and when talking to one of our other siblings, male 38, he agreed with her that I overstepped my boundaries. Fiance and I are just happy nephew found a nice outfit he likes. Am I the jerk? People are definitely saying in the comments that OP is the jerk. Maybe because they're thinking about, oh, well, the mom's going to have to go and pay for all of this. Or the mom said no, therefore they should just straight up say no because it's parent shopping. But to me, I see this as their event. This is their wedding where they said they want people to go creative. They came to them and said, hey, would this outfit be acceptable? My mom said no. If they said, yes, that outfit would be acceptable, why does that make them the jerk? I'm sorry that it puts more burden on the mom, but OP is merely stating that it would be acceptable at their wedding. Even if the mom has to turn it down because of monetary issues, I don't think that makes OP the jerk. Am I the jerk for not going to my girlfriend's son's funeral? I, 28-year-old male, have been dating my girlfriend, 30-year-old female, for two months. I think we had a good relationship, She has a son, 11-year-old male. My girlfriend and I were good friends for a few years. We met through mutual friends, so I haven't spent time with her alone until five months ago. I knew she had a son because she's posted about him on Facebook a few times. He has some sort of liver condition and was awaiting a liver transplant. It's just him and his mom. I don't know much about him as my girlfriend's very reserved talking about her son. I have a little sister, 26-year-old female. I've always been closer to her than other siblings, considering we're only a few years apart. When she was 11, we were fighting at school and she ended up fainting. She had to stay in the hospital for a few days to have tests done and she ended up being diagnosed with diabetes, not related to her death. I think it changed the dynamic of our relationship a lot, because she was in the hospital a lot more than other kids. At the start of September, my girlfriend's son started getting sicker and it was the first time she ever opened up to me about his health conditions. In early October, my sister got into an accident. It was very sudden, and because she still lives near my parents, they were heartbroken, and they don't have any children apart from my sister and I, so I went to help them. I grew up in Australia, and my sister and my family still live there. I live in America currently. For the funeral and to console my mom and dad, I decided to stay there for 10 days to help plan the funeral. On my second day there, I got a call from my girlfriend. She said that her son had passed away during the night. I tried to help her the best I could, even though I was already sad about the death of my sister. She said she wanted the funeral to be done soon and that it would happen on the sixth day of my 10 day trip. My sister's funeral was on the 8th and I wasn't going to take two flights to there and two flights back in less than two days to go to both. My girlfriend got really upset and said that I didn't care about her son, and I was upset at her too because I had just lost my sister. She told me that her son thought of me like a dad and I'd never met him, so I told her I didn't think of him like a son. She hung up angrily and we haven't spoken since. I'll admit I was harsh telling her, and a grieving mother didn't deserve that. However, I don't think I was wrong to push the idea of me being this kid's dad. All my mutual friends think I'm the jerk for not going and that I should have told her later, but she knows I've never met her son. 
and I wouldn't ditch my sister's funeral to go to her son's. My friends, though, think I did the right thing, and I wasn't obligated to go to his funeral. I don't know what I should have done. I'm glad I went to my sister's funeral, but I feel bad for how I told my girlfriend, as her son's never had a father figure in his life. First of all, my condolences to OP, and overall, this is a really, really tough situation. I think there was some weird emotional manipulation going on here where she tried to attach that dad label to OP without really having a good reason for it. It might seem harsh, but it might be the kind of thing that honestly they just needed to hear. Whether this relationship can recover or not, I'm not sure, but I don't think OP is the jerk for what happened here. Am I the jerk for refusing to change a custody agreement because I'm not being offered anything in return? My ex and I share 50-50 of our 9-year-old son. Basically, we have him every other week. She also has a 5-year-old from her second marriage. They're divorced and the custody arrangement is like ours, except she has the 5-year-old on the week that I have our 9-year-old. Her second ex-husband refused to work around our custody agreement, so my ex asked me to change ours. This is a huge deal and the reality is that I can't just sign off on it. If I say okay, then she'll start asking for more accommodations at my expense. I told her to think about what she's going to offer me to go along with this plan. She got mad that I wouldn't just do it. Honestly, if she would have offered me something like an extra holiday, then I'd go along with it. She even said that she wasn't going to pay my legal fees because a judge has to sign off any custody changes in our state. Now she's pissed and I don't care. I think OP is the jerk. To me, this just sounds overly petty. Would you guys agree? Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy tough-to-answer, tricky situations and stories like these, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for letting him and his guy friend be stranded in another city and refusing to pay for their plane tickets to get home? My fiancé, 33-year-old male, has a guy best friend that he's known for 16 years. He has cancer and is terminal. My fiancé wanted to take him on a vacation for a couple of days and begged me to basically fund it. I refused, although I felt incredibly guilty after he made me feel bad about it for days. Eventually, he was able to borrow money to go on the vacation. They went and spent two days at a sports city. When it was time to return, he called me asking me to pay for their plane tickets to get home. I was taken aback. I asked why I should pay, and he said because they ran out of money and didn't put any aside to get home. I refused and told him it wasn't my problem that he didn't save money for the return flight. He started arguing with me, saying that I can't let them be stranded in another city when I have the means to help, especially after I refused to help fund the vacation. I said no and that he needed to deal with it on his own. He didn't stop texting me trying to get me to pay. He and his friend had to eventually return by road and it took them 8 plus hours. He came home and blew up saying that I let him be stranded in another city and refused to help although I had the money to pay for their plane tickets. He said that by forcing them to travel by road, I'd caused his friend unnecessary exhaustion and turmoil. He called me every name under the sun and said I had no empathy for his friend and that I tainted the memories of this vacation. Am I the jerk? He's still mad at me and says he's in shock by the way I behaved in this situation. I think OP's not the jerk because from the get-go, OP expressed no desire to pay for any part of this. So for them to scrounge the money up and go shipping off and then immediately hit them up later saying, hey, we didn't actually plan well, can you help us out now? I don't think that changes the circumstances at all. They already said no. And in fact, to me, it seems like almost maybe emotional manipulation. This next story is, am I the jerk for throwing my wife a birthday party and royally pissing my mom off? My wife and I are currently staying with my parents because we just couldn't afford the cost of living in this area. We're both currently looking for better jobs and or something cheaper, but it is what it is right now. My mom and wife share a birthday and there aren't words for how much my mom hates this. There were lots of whining in the beginning, jokes about can't I just get a new girlfriend, and as of right now, she does her best to avoid my wife the entire week of the shared birthday. Outside of that, she's a decent mother-in-law, mostly pleasant to her, but their relationship is surface level, and they could both do without the other. My mom's currently at home recovering from surgery from a torn ACL, so she isn't doing much this year, though my dad got her cakes, food, and easily thousands of dollars worth of presents. 
My wife's been feeling pretty down due to our living situation and some external factors and I wanted to cheer her up. I asked my dad if we could have some people over. He said yes, but to be fair, I didn't specify it was for a birthday party. I'm not sure he even remembered it was my wife's birthday as he's totally disinterested in her. And he was in the middle of doing stuff for my mom who was acting very princessy about her surgery. I invited our closest friends and set up a nice little party for my wife. At some point my mom did come down and realized what was going on. I saw her look to the decorations and cake and she looked pissed. My dad quickly ushered her away and promised they would go out when she was better, but she said it wouldn't count. My dad came back out and muttered to me that I'm a jerk for doing this and called me insensitive and a mooch. He came out an hour later and shut the party down as he claimed we were being too loud. I don't think we were, but it was getting late so I didn't mind too much. My wife loved it and had a great birthday. I fully intended on cleaning up myself but was too tired to do it that night. My mom came down in the morning and saw the things still up and got pissy again. I was in the process of cleaning them and told her not to worry, I would take care of it. She just glared at me and stormed off. My dad came back down and berated me for throwing it in my mom's face that my wife got a birthday party and she didn't, and told me he can't stand me and can't wait for us to leave. I told them they're both being crazy and my mom doesn't own the date. He shot back that I tricked him as he didn't realize it was a birthday party, to which I laughed and said, maybe he should know his own daughter-in-law a bit better. He complained to some family and now my aunt and her husband are calling me a jerk as well. To be fair, I don't know if OP did do anything for their mom, but I do think it would be a little nice if they, I don't know, seemed to recognize or do something for their mom on their birthday in their house. That said, I don't think OP's the jerk for what they did for their wife here. I just find it weird that it's the same day for the birthdays of both their wife and their mom. They're in their mom's house, and they don't seem to be doing anything for their mom? Our next story is, am I the jerk because I won't childproof my new house? I'm female 30, a new house owner. I bought it earlier this year and moved in a few months ago. I don't have kids, hence no need to childproof my house. Of course, I don't have swords sticking out of my walls, but my stairs don't have baby gates, etc. I also have quite a few pets, parrots of different species. I turn my top floor into parrot space where they have a massive room to fly freely all day and all plants and treats and toys. It's a lot of stuff, but parrots are easily stressed and they can be fragile, especially the smaller ones. My family's been pushing for me to host Thanksgiving in my house as it's the biggest one. I have five siblings who all have their own kids, between two to four each, and it's a lot of people when you add my parents, aunts, uncles, etc. I didn't want to do it as it's a lot of prep work with cooking and then cleaning after, but I eventually agreed but laid down some ground rules. 1. I plan the menu and everyone brings a dish so we can all contribute. 2. Bring entertainment for your kids. I'll make one room into a quiet space where they can go and take a nap if they're overstimulated or they can go in and play quietly but they have to provide tots or whatever their kids will need. 3. Absolutely no one without me goes to the parrot room. It'll be locked anyway. I thought these were simple and fair but my siblings are now demanding that I baby proof my house because it's unsafe. What if they fall off the stairs? that I must allow the kids to see the parrots as they want to play with them and it'll keep the kids quiet. I told them that they would have to keep an eye on their kids because I'm not going to install childproof systems for one day and they'll simply have to keep an eye on their kids. I also said there's absolutely no way that I would allow the kids inside the parrot room. They're calling me a jerk, a spoiled kid, I'm the oldest but okay, lazy bum etc. I threatened that if they keep on going, I would cancel Thanksgiving in my house and they can host it, but they keep on going. Because of the situation, I'm currently not on speaking terms with two of my sisters. They keep complaining and ganging up on me. My father's on my side, but my mother has my sibling's side, and I'm not sure anymore. Should I cave in? Am I really the jerk in this situation? Honestly, it sounds like OP's house was kind of volunteered for them. I think OP's definitely not the jerk. Nobody in their right mind would go and install childproofing for one day, and in no way should you feel bad for looking out for your parrots that, let's be real, are probably not going to be treated very kindly by children. 
Our next story is, am I the jerk for crying and asking my boyfriend to leave over a burger? I, 21 year old female, recently found out I'm pregnant, woo, getting to the 6 month mark, it's a complicated pregnancy and I'm exhausted. My boyfriend, 28, moved in with me because of it. It wasn't expected, but we're making do. I'm training to be a teacher and he's currently looking for employment. Technically, I'm working two jobs to support the both of us. It's tiring, but he's looking so it's not over that. There's a local burger place I've been wanting. We rarely go, but I've been having cravings. They shut at a certain time. He agreed to it. He agreed to ordering, since they only have one veggie burger I like. It's not as though there's multiple things I can have. They shut at 9, I got home at 8.40, and he had an ordered, and by the time he went to, it was too late. I started crying because I've been craving that all week and all I wanted was a burger and a hot shower. I couldn't even have a shower since he used the last of the hot water. He didn't apologize and offered to go to Burger King, which I didn't want, and he got all silent claiming that I'm being a jerk since he's been job hunting all day. As I see it, my day started at 6am and ended when I got in bed at 9.30. His day started at 9am and ended at 9.30, but I've got the extra weight of pregnancy. We got into an argument about how we're comparing days and that he's overwhelmed. I asked him to leave because I don't like arguing and he had to stay in his car since he moved in with me, away from friends. He argued that I'm blowing it out of the window because I'm pregnant and not considering his feelings because he's overwhelmed. So am I. My friends say that I'm the jerk because he's probably in over his head and had to sleep in his car over a burger. Am I the jerk? I mean, I totally get feeling overwhelmed if you're literally working all day trying to find some kind of job. But let's be real, it takes not even five minutes to pop in an online order for delivery nonetheless. I mean, it's asking the bare minimum. If this dude at any point during the day had to go and sit on the toilet for a few minutes, could have done it then. So I think overall OP's not the jerk. Shoot, if I made arrangements like that, I got back from working two jobs, and I wasn't even pregnant, I probably would cry. 